In the F-35B world, we really have been expanding the envelope and over the last two years we've been very focused on weapons integration, which actually is a, a fairly significant undertaking, putting weapons both internally and externally uh, on the F-35, not just symmetric but also asymmetric weapon loadouts, which kind of simulates getting airborne with a symmetric load and then dropping a weapon or two from one side of the airplane and the other side still, uh, still retaining the weight and the airplane still has to be able to fight its way back out of course of uh, an enemy zone like that and actually still needs to be able to hover with an asymmetric loadout. It's a very tricky thing for an airplane to do, the Harrier didn't do it terribly well, the F-35 does it pretty well. On top of that we've done uh, vertical takeoffs, we've continued to expand the envelope on vertical landings, uh, we've done rolling vertical landings uh, and we've just started into, uh, into ski jump testing. So it's uh, a year ago in June last month uh, we did our first ski jump takeoff and we've now done 31 ski jump takeoffs in all and I'm delighted to say that part of the program is going extremely well. What will you be doing in the future to bring the uh, F-35B into UK service? Right, so uh, in the 2018 time frame, uh, actually in the fourth quarter 2018 uh, and into 2019 is going to be the first of class flight trials for the Queen Elizabeth class carriers. So for the very first time then, we're going to bring the F-35B to the, the Queen Elizabeth herself and then subsequently to the Prince of Wales carrier, get both of those uh, aircraft carriers cleared out so that the maritime capability is, is truly there for the F-35. As part of that, we are going to go back to sea on, uh, on another US vessel, which will be what we call Developmental Trial 3. So we've already done DT-1, which I think we'd done last time you and I spoken, and then we did DT-2, another, another trial, and we're going back in October of this year to do DT-3. Uh, so it's a three-week period, uh, period at sea where we're looking for really heavy sea states. We're looking for some nasty weather, some big winds, get the aircraft carrier moving around as much as we possibly can so that we really put the F-35 uh, control all through its paces, make sure that we can land it in unpleasant conditions. There'll be a lot of mission systems testing as well to make sure that we're, th we're truly compatible uh, with the carrier. Uh, and, and so although I'm talking about a US carrier, all that work informs us about the capability of the airplane to land on a ship and therefore helps the first to class flight trials. So the ski jump work is also critical to that of course because the UK, uh, actually the Italians are looking to use a ski jump as well. But right now the ski jump work that we're doing is very much about the UK first class flight trials and going to the Queen Elizabeth class. We've got another hundred more ski jumps to do before we'll be ready to go to sea. Uh, on the on the ski jump which is based at, uh, at Pax River uh, where the integrated test force uh, is based. So over the coming year we're going to do the developmental trial 3 that I just talked about on the US ship. Uh, we're going to finish our ski jump testing. We're going to finish our asymmetric weapons testing in Stovall mode, um, bringing an asymmetric weapons load to the hover. Uh, and then that will be the end of the SDD program and then we'll be looking into preparing, planning, finalizing the details to go to the UK ship. And, and unlike the Harrier, the F-35 can bring its load back to the ship? Yes, the Harrier could bring a limited load back to the ship, but when it did so, it was pretty much entirely out of gas. Uh, the F-35 is designed to, or the F-35B is designed to bring back a significantly greater payload and I'm glad to say it's meeting the requirements. Uh, and as an example, uh, we can carry 5,000 pounds of gas, of fuel, into the hover, which means we can choose to hover for 10 minutes if, if we carry that, that, that fuel load into the hover. Alternatively, it can be a mix of fuel and weapons. So you can see with a couple of thousand pounds of gas, you can carry 3,000 pounds of weapons and you can bring that kind of load out to the hover, which is something the F-35B is designed to do routinely. Has, did the F-35B change the way that you approach a ship and, and land? Yes, the control laws of the F-35B are designed to be very, very simple for the pilot. Uh, so the Harrier was a bit of a handful. It had three levers for the pilot to cope with, and famously a nozzle lever and a throttle that were very close together. And over the years, many, many times, the human in the loop, the pilot, has made errors with respect to the position of the nozzle lever and the throttle. And it was a very simple, very easy mistake to make. So. We had to train hard to make sure we didn't make that mistake. And we have designed that 
cognitive failure out of the F-35B. It's gone. You can't make that error because those levers do not exist. Instead, the thing has become very, very much more easy to fly, and that's had a huge impact on the way you landed on the ship. And I think we spoke before about the buttons and the, the fact it's become a button-pressing machine. And when you come back to the ship, it's just the same. It's, it's largely about setting up the displays, making sure that the airplane knows what's coming at it, and you press the button. So you sort of pre-program it, and you press the buttons, and the airplane slows down and it sets the pilot up perfectly for a landing on board the ship and it's really extremely simple. And the sensor systems help at night, night landings? Yeah, so actually uh, given that the aeroplane is so easy to fly, the pilot can just as easily look out of the window and, and see the airplane with, with the naked eye and actually land very comfortably without using uh, any of the fancy systems. But the fancy systems are there and they're available and they potentially make it safer. Um, so we have electro-optical devices that allow the pilot to either use a night vision camera, which is mounted on the helmet just about here. Uh, and we also have the, the DAS, um, which, which is a distributed aperture system. It allows the, uh, the pilot to look anywhere around the 360 degree sphere around the airplane, uh, including when you're in the hover, you can look directly down underneath the airplane. So the pilot literally by looking down will see the view underneath the airplane drawn on the visor immediately in front of his eyes, giving you a somewhat surreal feeling that the airplane is in fact not there, though you're still sitting on it so you can actually feel it. Um, but these things do help the pilot. Uh, they're very intuitive to use, it's very comfortable after the first time you've seen it, you go, oh, okay, that's the way it works, I'm fine with that. And then uh, it makes life easier. And you did the US Marine Corps are the leader at the moment in um, shipborne ops? Yes, the US Marine Corps uh, and the US Navy have both done ship trials, but the only ship trials for the F-35B have been with the US Marine Corps. And in the future, that will be the UK in the 2018 timeframe. And then at some point, we'll get out onto uh, the Italian carrier as well. And of course, there may be some future uh, buyers of the F-35B who, uh, who we are yet to find out about, and they may also have some carriers.